What's up, everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at For Now Marketing, and welcome to Brace for Technical Marketers. Our video topic today is one campaign, two campaigns, or one canvas. And yesterday we posted our very first Braze brainstorming post on LinkedIn and had some amazing answers from the community. Um, first of all, the question was, say you have two emails, email structure is overall the same with small differences in copy, triggered by the same custom event, but different custom event properties. And I asked the Braze community, would you build two different campaigns or build one campaign? and use liquid to distinguish. Um, and we got just a bunch of different comments with all with great ideas, great thoughts, um, great experiences from all these power users. And also someone even threw a different suggestion of building using a canvas, uh, which I wasn't even thinking about to be honest, but it is a very valid approach as well. So what I wanted to do in this video is go through the three options that were kind of discussed in this uh, LinkedIn thread. Talk about the pros and cons for all of them and just show us how we can do that uh, in Brace. Let's get started. So first to set some context, here are the two emails that we're working with. We have a welcome email for those who signed up for our silver program. This is what the full email looks like versus those who signed up for our gold program. And they have an extra module where they have some information about how to customize your profile because let's say our gold users uh, has the ability to customize their profile. And both of these um, welcome emails will be powered, will be triggered by the custom event membership started, where the membership started event property distinguishes between membership tier. So that can be silver or that can be gold. So depending on which uh, tier, membership tier, the user signed up with, they will either get the gold program email or the silver program welcome email. So first of all, let's actually go a little bit out of order and start with our two different campaign approach, which may be the most straightforward um, and simple, concise way of going about it. So I'm going to create a campaign and this is going to be titled welcome email silver tier, welcome email silver tier. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and use our templates. And then that will be the silver program template. And for the sake of this uh, video, we won't focus too much about, actually, we will need to focus a little bit about our email, but for this version, we are simply inserting our email, nothing to fix. This is what they're, what the users are going to receive. On the scheduled delivery page on their action based, we will be choosing perform custom event. And the custom event we mentioned was membership started. And we'll be adding the property filter where membership tier equals silver and that's our data value all lowercase silver um, and then this would target all users so all users who trigger membership started will get this email so this email is actually completed and then the gold version is going to look very very similar except um, and how i would typically build that is i would simply duplicate what i had or we could probably start from scratch because this one is uh we haven't done too much to it, but welcome gold tier. Um, and we would need to swap the template to the gold program. So now the gold campaign, which is a separate campaign, is getting the gold version of the email. There it is, the gold program, welcome email gold tier. And then this time they're not using membership tier equals silver, membership tier equals gold. And let's save that as a draft. Then let me go ahead and open up these campaigns, uh, both of them, so we can compare side by side. So here I have the silver tier um, in this nested braze tab, and then here I have the gold tier. Um, once again, very straightforward, very simple. Um, so I think the pro of this is that it's just very, um, it's clean, it's simple. It's um, We have analytics separated for both of these campaigns, and analytics reporting is going to be a big topic that um, we'll talk about. So in that sense, it's a very intuitive way to build, um, doesn't require any technical assistance, any liquid. Um, but the downside is that let's say we had to make a change. Um, we made a change to maybe the, the logo that we're using or the intro uh, paragraph that we're using. Now we do need to make a change for both this campaign and the gold campaign. Um, say we added five more tiers. We have a bronze, silver, gold, diamond, platinum, and something else on top of that. 
Now, as we grow our program and having more tiers, uh, more programs, we may end up having too many welcome emails to manage, uh, and it may become a little bit too many quantities of campaigns to manage um, in an easy way. So I would say those are the pros and cons for having two separate campaigns for this one. Now let's shift our strategy and think about and look at what it looks like to build one campaign for all. So I'm going to actually duplicate this again. And I'm going to call it welcome email, um, all tiers. And then the first change I'll make before I get into the email is I'm going to go to the schedule delivery page and I'm going to get rid of the property filter because this is the email for all tiers, regardless of silver or gold or any of the future ones. We really just need to trigger this on membership started. Now, where the uh, challenging and interesting and fun part comes into play is inside our emails. So depending on whether the event property that triggered this email will be using silver tier um, or gold tier, we have some changes we need to make. So for example, the first change, so it does require us to have somewhat of a similar email structure that we can easily compare and contrast um, and make some differences. So what I would do in this situation is um, something like if and right here. So we're going to set it use liquid to distinguish between the silver or the gold program. So the personalization, the blue plus button is always very, very helpful. If event property and the property name, I forgot it, um, even though I built it just a minute ago is membership underscore tier. And as best practice, we always try to copy uh, the data fields from where we can see them. Um, and even if I did know it exactly, it's just uh, the best way to avoid mistakes by not trying to remember, but copy and pasting. So if the event properties membership tier is equal to silver, so that's our first uh, if block and uh, the block is the text is pretty big, so it might be a bit hard to see, but then we'll have it say silver and then give it a space and then else we could either do an else statement or we could do else if uh, membership tier is equal to gold then we can um, do gold and then i would close it with an end if statement and then let me actually think about the spaces for a second so i'm actually going to take away spaces from any of my um, conditional blocks so let's take away the space there as well. And then let's just put the space in front of program so we know that there's a space for all of them. Um, and let's just test this part so far. So I'm going to go ahead and preview. And let's see if it renders. So right now it's just as program, but we do need to add a custom user. And if our membership tier is silver, our email will say silver. And then if the campaign was triggered with membership tier gold, our email will say gold. Okay, and then there is the second part where the customize your profile should only show up for a gold user. So then what I'm going to do here is we can actually slide in a paragraph tag um, and then we'll put it right above this spacer um, or right above this module and then also below this module. And we're going to wrap that module with some liquid tags. Um, so we'll put another one here and then whenever i insert paragraph blocks to use as liquid i do like to erase all padding and this will say something like if once again membership tier is equal to gold so only if the membership proper or sorry event properties membership tier is equal to gold then go ahead and render whatever is about to come next so this module is only going to show up if membership tier is equal to gold and then we can simply, once again, get rid of the padding and then end our end if our conditional block there. So everything in between these two are going to show up only if membership tier is equal to gold. Let's preview and test. And first of all, I want to show us the silver portion. Um, so silver program, and we're not seeing anything. That's what we wanted. Great. But if our users did sign up with gold, then we are seeing the gold module. So this is how we use Liquid to uh, differentiate between two emails that have similar structures um, in the case that we want to avoid building two separate campaigns. So we could just build um, this one campaign and say this handles all tiers. 
we could actually add some more uh, conditional clauses for silver, gold, bronze, diamond, and platinum, like we mentioned. Um, yes, our liquid might get a little bit longer, but it is still more manageable than having five or six campaigns because everything lives within one campaign. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, if it's using, if it's one campaign, one email, and it's just being distinguished by um, the liquid that's written inside for dynamic data, how do we know which version the users received in our reporting? So there is a special uh, liquid tag, a Braze liquid tag called message extras that is going to be for that exact reason. So I'm going to slide a paragraph tag up at the top. Um, that's just my preference for where I like to write liquid so that it's up at the top um, front and center. And if we can look up Braze message extras, and it looks like this. And it simply uh, asks for a key and a value. So it's, I think of it as a flag on our email where we can use to show in our reporting that this version of the email was sent to this user um, or the other version of the email was sent to this other user. So how that works is I'm gonna go ahead and simply copy that liquid snippet. And in here, I am going to add that the message extra, the key that we're identifying is membership tier. Very oftentimes what we end up doing is we write the event property name here, and then we can uh, simply reference the event property um, actual liquid variable of that one. So tier or value is going to be event properties, membership tier. So what that's gonna happen is this is going to render. It's gonna render behind the scenes so we won't be able to see, but with every email, we are sending along a membership tier key and the value is going to be the actual value that the user signed up with. So either silver or gold in our situation. If I preview and test, that one should not be visible, not be taking up any space. Um, but behind the scenes, if I add custom user and use silver or gold, now this email is uh, flagged silver in our message extras. And this email is flagged with gold in our message extras. And the cool thing about message extras is that in your current or Snowflake uh, connectors, which are the two ways you can export data, the message extra field will show up in the current and the Snowflake connectors. Um, and let's take a look at the message engagements, uh, Braze currents doc real quick. So if you go over here, Let's filter for email and we're just gonna look up message extras. So notice how every single email event, email send event, but also delivery. Um, and then same with, actually it's just an, it's just uh, showing up in the email send events, but message extras field is here. So in this export, you'll see either silver or gold for this one. And the same field should be available in your Snowflake as well. So if you do have a robust data team and a robust data export connection where you know that every single one of your email sends will have some uh, analytics and reporting support and you can distinguish there, then you have the option of just using one email um, that uses Liquid and also uses message extras to distinguish between the two. If you do not quite have that support, um, then it may make sense to have two separate campaigns like we saw earlier. Now there is a third option, which is using the canvas. And let's go over that option real quick. And that may end up actually being the best of both worlds um, and gives us a little bit more flexibility. So as I'm saying this, it sounds like I am leaning towards um, having canvas as my winning pick. Um, I would say none of these are the right or wrong choices, but it really depends on your team's preferences, workflow, and how simple or complex that you're willing to make it. So let's go into the canvas and talk about that third step. Um, so we're going to create a new canvas and this one is going to be called welcome email. This one will also be all tiers. Um, if I built a welcome email for silver and gold tiers individually, that would be the exact same approach as in the campaign. Um, so we will consider the all tiers version of the canvas. So just like campaigns, this one will be triggered using membership started, no property filters necessary. Um, the one downside about using a canvas is that you do have to go through what's called the user update step. So right now, this is a feature that the Braze community has asked for, but we are unable to split our users um, 
based on the canvas entry property. So even though some users enter using membership tier equals silver and others enter using membership tier equals gold, we don't have a way to split them up right now just using canvas entry properties. So what we need to do actually is, first of all, I'm going to split them up with silver and let's go ahead and add gold separately. And just to be consistent, I will add them using lowercase, exactly how our data is um, shown. And, and actually, I just realized before we go into splitting, uh, because we had just mentioned that we can't split based on Canvas entry properties, what we need to do before that is log a, log a custom attribute on our user profile using this user update step. So what that's going to look like is when a user enters this Canvas um, based on their membership tier, we're going to first log that data as an attribute on their profile using this user update step. So we are going to, um, and we don't have this attribute ready yet. What we need to do is I like to open this up in a new tab and we're going to log that same membership tier on our user profile. So I'll call it membership tier. It's going to be a string. We'll save it. And then now if I go back, um, there it is, it shows up now. So we are going to log a custom attribute called membership tier, and we are going to um, log it with the value that we're getting from our Canvas entry property. And notice how campaigns, we were using event properties. This time it's called Canvas entry properties. Um, once again, I'm going to go back to my data page to copy this name exactly. And then we're going to insert. So what, that, what this is doing is every time a user enters, we're going to first log a custom attribute called membership tier using their Canvas entry property called membership tier. And then what that allows us to do is the user will first have the data written on their profile, which by the way, it does take up a data point for every user that goes through this flow. Um, so there is a contractual aspect of using this approach as well. But once the user has that written, then they are now ready to be split up into either a custom attribute membership tier equals silver versus custom attribute membership tier equals gold. And when we do this, and we are now able to actually use um, the email of templates that we had earlier. So our template um, silver will be the first one that we use. So the silver one has been added here. Um, and there it is, the silver program. And then the same exact thing for gold. I'll pause the video and do that real quick. And then here we have it, the gold program for the gold branch. Um, so obviously, as you uh, have just saw, as you have just seen, it's a much more complex multi-step to get this Canvas um, journey set up. Uh, but we do have the convenience of consolidating into a single Canvas. So one Canvas, multiple emails. Um, and we also have the reporting split up between silver and gold. So inside this Canvas analytics, once we launch it, we'll be able to get some analytics separated by the silver emails and the gold emails. And then the final benefit of using a Canvas is that if we do want to do some A-B testing in the future, we have some additional options when it comes to uh, Canvases. So we could use an experiment path, uh, we could use uh, multivariance, but the campaign route, uh, especially the one campaign route, we will not be able to do any A-B testing. Um, and if we do end up doing two different campaigns, then we do have the option of A-B testing, um, but that's just managing a A-B test happening in multiple campaigns might get messy quite quickly. Um, so I would say this one, the Canvas approach has the most pros and possibly the most cons, uh, which are the complex setup and then the data point usage. Once again, there is no right or wrong answer. It's really based on process preference um, and just, I would say, give all three approaches a try, see what works the best for your team, and then let us know what you end up going with, uh, depending on uh, what you believe is the best fit for your team. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.